I'm McKenna and I'm the Summer Reading Club Coordinator and today I have another story time for us but I wanted to begin this story time a little bit differently and I actually wanted to begin it with a land acknowledgement. So as we gather today for our story time I respectfully acknowledge that the library is situated on the land and traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Neutral peoples. We recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place and to these lands. We also recognize the contributions Indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening this community. Today I wanted to start with a different hello song than we've had in the last few weeks. And I know I keep adding new hello songs, but I think it's fun and it keeps us on our toes and it helps us provide a lot of change every single week. So this one's called Clap and Sing Hello and it's an action song. So I'll sing the first verse through and then we'll do it all together. So it goes like this. We clap and we sing hello. We clap and we sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and we sing hello. Okay, we'll do that again with clapping and then we'll do some other actions. Okay, we clap and we sing hello. We clap and we sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and we sing hello. We wave and we sing hello. We wave and we sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and we sing hello. Okay, let's do stomping. We stomp and we sing hello. We stomp and we sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stomp and we sing hello. Okay, our first song today, aside from our hello song, is called Five Green and Speckled Frogs, and it's an action song and a counting song. So you're going to start with a log, which is your one hand, and then your five speckled frogs. And it goes like this. Five green and speckled frogs sit on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. So we're going to sing that and we're going to count down from five. So it goes like this. Five green and speckled frogs sit on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Four green and speckled frogs sit on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Okay, you ready? Three green and speckled frogs sitting, sorry, sat on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Glub, glub. Okay, last one. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Okay, so our first book today is called I Sang You Down from the Stars. And it is by Tasha Spillett Summer, Sumner, sorry, illustrated by Michaela Gord, and it was published by Owl Kids Books. I sang you down from the stars. I loved you before I met you, before I held you in my arms. I sang you down from the stars. As I reached for your eyes in the sky, I saw a shooting star. I followed it to a fluffy white eagle plume. I held on to it, the first gift in a bundle that will be yours. You see the eagle feather? Summer was fading into fall on the day I found out that you had chosen to make my body your first home. Together we went to a gather cedar and sage, medicines that will keep our spirits strong through the winter. When you are old enough, I will teach you how to use them. Into your bundle they go. As the north wind blew and grew bigger and stronger, waiting for you taught me about patience and love. With care in my hands, I sewed your first star blanket. With each stitch, I whispered a prayer for you and thought about wrapping you up warm and safe, just like you are now in my belly. 
into your bundle it goes. As the ice began to melt, we visited the river. When our people traveled the waterways, the song of the rushing rapids call us home. We picked up a small stone for you so that you always remember you belong to this place. Into your bundle it goes. You arrived in the spring with the waters that come when the ice breaks and the rivers flow again. For the first time after our long wait, I looked down at you and found stars in your eyes. Our hearts danced together. I honored your journey from the sky by passing on the gift, gifts I had gathered for you. This, my baby, is your sacred medicine bundle. First, I wrapped you in your star blanket and held you close to me. The fluffy plume I found when I followed the shooting star is a reminder that there's beauty all around us. We just have to look and see. Medicines of cedar and sage are for you to keep your spirit strong. When you hold this stone from the river, remember that the land carries stories, and so do you. Family and friends come, came from near and far to welcome you. One by one, they held you and greeted you. You brought them so much love and joy. I saw that you, my baby, are also a sacred bundle. You are my baby bundle. As I held you close, I whispered in your ear, I loved you before I met you. Before I held you in my arms, I sang you down from the stars. Our next song is a shaker song. So you want to have a container full of rocks or pasta, or maybe you even have a shaker yourself. And it goes like this. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. Dance them on your shoulders, dance them on your head. Dance them on your knee and tuck them into bed. Okay, we'll do that a few times through. It's a cute song, I really love it. Okay, egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. Dance them on your shoulders, dance them on your head, dance them on your knee and tuck them into bed. Okay, we'll do that one more time. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, Egg shakers dancing all around the town. Dance them on your shoulders, dance them on your head, dance them on your knee and tuck them into bed. I think we should do that one more time. I really like that shaker song. I'm gonna switch hands and maybe you can too. Okay, you ready? Egg shakers up, egg shakers down. Egg shakers dancing all around the town. Dance them on your shoulders, dance them on your head. Dance them on your knee and tuck them into bed. Okay, next we're going to do one of my favorite songs and we did it a few weeks ago. And it's an animal and barnyard song and it called, it's called Who's in the Barnyard? And I'll remind you how it goes. So it goes an oink, a moo, a cock-a-doodle doo, who's in the barnyard playing peekaboo? And then I will tell you all the parts and noises my animal friends make, and then we'll see if you can guess them right. Okay, we'll do it a few times. An oink, a moo, a cock-a-doodle-doo, who's in the barnyard playing peekaboo? Okay, I have my first friend. They're fluffy, and they like to bounce around, and they'll eat carrots. If you have a garden, they might even munch on your lettuce. Uh, in my garden, they stole our cucumbers. Uh, so now we have no more cucumbers, but I think they found them pretty tasty. And on Easter, you might have one of these friends bring you some chocolates. It, do you guess? It's a little bunny. Say hello to Mr. Bunny. Okay, let's do it again. An oink, a moo. A cock a doodle doo. Who's in the barnyard playing peekaboo? Okay, I have another friend. This one's pretty big. This one's a this one's a pretty big friend. So this friend kind of looks like a horse, but a little bit smaller. And if you watch the Shrek movies, there's and this animal is in this movie. And he makes a pretty funny noise. The noise he makes is like, eat off. It's a donkey. Say hi, Mr. Donkey. Okay, one last time. I have one more friend. An oink, 
a moo, a cock-a-doodle-doo. Who's in the barnyard playing peekaboo? Okay. This friend, I don't really know if you want them in your barnyard or even in your backyard, but they're pretty cute. They're a little bit smelly, especially I think if you make them upset or scared them, scare them. And they're black and white. They have a long tail. Did you guess who it is? It's Mr. Skunk. See his long tail, his long black and white tail. Say hi, Mr. Skunk. So our next story is The Caterpillar Woman by Nadia uh, Summer Talk, illustrated by Carolyn Gann and published by Inhabit Media. The Caterpillar Woman. Piuk was a beautiful young woman. She enjoyed spending time alone in her favorite lake close to her camp. She loved to dance alone with the butterflies by the lake, imagining beautiful rhythms in her head. This was when Piuk felt most at peace. One day, Piuk decided to take a walk to the lake. During her walk, she noticed a figure up ahead. This figure was walking towards her. Piuk was curious because she did not usually cross paths with anyone on this walk. As the figure got closer, she realized it was a woman. This woman appeared to have skin unlike Piuk's. It sort of glowed and had a tinge of green to it. It reminded her of the skin of an insect. Eventually, Piuk met the strange woman. The woman spoke first, introducing herself as Taurak. Taurak and Piuk that uh, told Piyuk that she had gotten lost and was trying to find her camp. I am so cold, Taurak said as she shivered. I've been walking for a long time and I only have this thin jacket to wear. Would you be willing to give me your parka? Taurak asked. Piyuk wasn't sure if she, at first if she should trade parkas with a stranger. Taurak's jacket looked very thin and it was made from skins that Piyuk had never seen before. But Piuk eventually agreed because she did not want Taurak to be cold. Piuk was a kind young woman and was known in her camp for being very giving and helpful to others. She felt sorry for Taurak, so she agreed and gave Taurak her warm clothing. Piuk and Taurak went their separate ways. Soon after, Piuk began to feel chilly, so she put on the coat that Taurak had left with her. As soon as she pulled on the coat, an odd feeling came over her. She looked at her hands and realized that her skin was changing. Piyok's skin began to transform from a smooth, beautiful tan color to a prickly, fuzzy green color. She was afraid of what was happening to her, and she did not know whether she should go home to her camp or not. So she continued to walk on to her favorite lake. When she arrived at the lake, she looked at her reflection in the water. When she saw, what she saw terrified her. Not only did she have prickly, fuzzy green skin, but her face and her hair were horrible. She had long green spiny hair growing out of, of every direction. She no longer looked like herself. It was then that Piyok realized that the jacket the stranger had given her had turned her into a caterpillar. She decided that it was best that she not return home to her camp and she did not want to frighten her family. Piyok began to wander the land, lost and afraid. Eventually, she found an abandoned tent and stayed there. She lived alone for many months, having no contact with anyone. Then, one day, as she lay in her tent, sat and alone, she heard the old familiar sounds of people traveling. She could hear Inuit laughing and talking and the sound of their kamit crunching against the dry tundra. Piyok excitedly peeked out of her tent and saw a group of men walking towards her. The men saw the tent and entered it. They appeared confused and curious as to who she was. Piyok offered the, them tea and having noticed the rips in her clothing, offered to mend the holes. While mending their, her clothing, Piyok told them who she was and where she came from. She told them about her meeting with the strange woman and that she had once lived with her family but was now afraid of frightening them with her appearance so she chose to live alone in her tent. P. 
Fiok later learned that the men were on a journey to find themselves wives. A part of her was hopeful that one of them would take her as his wife, but none of them offered. This made her feel sad because she knew that the reason they did not want her was because she looked like a caterpillar and not like a regular woman. Once Piyok had finished mending the men's clothing, they left and continued on with their journey. She was once she was alone again. She started, sorry, she stared at her hands, which shared the same kind of skin as the caterpillar crawling on the floor next to her. She began to cry. Then suddenly, Piyok was startled by the sound of something moving inside outside her tent. She looked outside and saw that one of the men had returned. Piyok asked the man, "Why are you here? You better hurry, or you will lose the others." The man introduced himself as Amarak and replied, You are very kind. I would like to have you as my wife. <clears throat> Piyok was surprised and could not speak. She did not expect that any of these men, or any others for that matter, would look past her physical ex appearance, but it seemed that this man had. Although Amarak was much older than Piyok, she could see that he was still a good hunter and she knew that he would be able to take care of her and provide her provide a home for her. She accepted his proposal and they became husband and wife. Piyok and her husband fell in love and as each new day passed, their love for each other grew. Amarak took great care of his wife and she took and she of him. One day, as they were sharing stories, Piyok told Amarak that before she became a caterpillar, she had loved to dance. After talking about her love for music, Piyok had asked Amarak if he would make her a drum so he so she could dance once again. He agreed and told her that he would make her the most beautiful drum she had ever seen. The next day, Amarak set out to search for materials for the drum he had promised to make for his wife. As he was walking, he came across a small cave close to the shoreline that was often flooded and with high tide. He thought this would be the perfect place to find some driftwood that he could use to make a drum beater. Although dark and deep enough that no sunlight reached inside, the walls of the cave appeared to shimmer, as if by magic. To his surprise, Amarak came across a drum beater already, complete, laying on the cave floor. Amarak was ecstatic. Although the beater appeared to be old, it was still very beautiful. Amarak felt that it was pretty enough to give to his wife. He assumed it had been abandoned, and so he happily picked it up and began his journey back home where his wife awaited his arrival. As soon as Amarak returned home, he began working on the drum. He worked on it for many days. He wanted to make Piyok happy, so he worked very hard on this drum. Once Amarak was finished with the drum and was pleased with its appearance, he showed it to Piyok. As soon as she held it in her hands, Piyok felt something come over her. It was a feeling of happiness that she couldn't describe, but when she knew she hadn't felt in years since becoming a caterpillar. Piyok asked Amarak to play it for her, and so he played while she danced. And as she danced, she began to feel lighter. She looked at her hands and noticed the fuzzy, prickly green skin beginning to shed. She looked over at her husband and was amazed to see he too was beginning to change. As, she, as he happily beat the drum, he slowly became young again, while she was becoming beautiful again with each step of her dance. As Amarak continued to play the drum, Piyok danced. She danced until she could not dance any longer. When they were finished, Piyok and Amarak looked at each other. Amarak, who had fallen in love with this not very beautiful, yet very kind woman, was lost for words as he stared at this now beautiful wife. Piyok, who had fallen in love with the old stranger who took such great care of her, saw a man who had suddenly appeared young and strong. Amarak looked down at the drum, beater in his hands. He wondered whether there had been some kind of power in the music or in the old drum beater he'd found in the cave. What Piyok and Amarak did not know was that the drum beater that Amarak had taken from the mysterious cave did carry a special type of power. It had been left behind by their ancestors thousands of years before in the abandoned cave and it still carried some of the magic that existed when the world was new. Because Piyok had a, kind, a good kind heart, she became beautiful like she once had been. And Amarak, who was becoming old and weak before finding the woman wooden beater, became young and strong again because he had the kindness in his heart to see Piyok's beauty, despite her outward appearance. They were rewarded for their kindness and unconditional love they had for each other. And so Piyok, who, had once, who was once a caterpillar, lived the rest of her days beautiful once more. 
She felt like the butterfly she once danced with by her favorite lake, freed from her cocoon. Okay, so our next song will help us wake up a little bit. I know I need to be woken up a little bit. And so it's called, I Wake Up My Hands. And it goes like this. I wake up my hands with a clap, 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 a clap, 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 a clap, clap, clap. I wake up my hands with a clap, 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 and I wiggle my waggles away. Okay, we'll do clapping again, and then we'll do some stomping, and we'll do a few others. So it goes like this. I wake up my hands with a clap, 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 a clap, 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 a clap, clap, clap. I wake up my hands with a clap, 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 and I wiggle my waggles away. And I wake up my feet with a stomp, 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 a stomp, 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 a stomp, stomp, stomp. I wake up my feet with a stomp, 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 and I wake all my waggles away. We'll do one more. I wake up my tummy with a beep, 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 a beep, 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 a beep, beep, beep. I wake up my tummy with a beep, 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 and I wake all my waggles away. Okay, so our last story is We Are Water Protectors by Carol Lindstrom, illustrated by Michaela Goad, sorry, and published by Roaring Books Press. We are water protectors. Water is the first medicine, Nokomos told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, the winged ones, the crawling ones. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomos told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors, we stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. So that's today's story time, but before we end it, I'm just going to do our goodbye song, which as always is the same as our hello song, just make sure that you say goodbye instead of hello. So it goes like this. We clap and we say goodbye. We clap and we say goodbye. With our friends at story time, we clap and we say goodbye. We stomp and we say goodbye. We stomp and we say goodbye. With our friends at story time, we stomp and we say goodbye. We wave and we say goodbye. We wave and we say goodbye. With our friends at story time, we wave and we say goodbye. Okay, thank you everybody for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you all take care until we see each other next. Bye.